Thanksgiving. It's always a wonderful holiday of family. For the first time ever, we dined outside. We had so many people we couldn't fit inside. So it was a great blessing and uh, we thank the Lord for the weather. It was beautiful. You know, the traditional teaching about Thanksgiving is focused on Massachusetts. Miles Standish, Plymouth Plantation, 1621. However, that's really not the first Thanksgiving. The first one is at Berkeley Plantation here in the James River in 1619, two years or a year before the Pilgrims even landed at Plymouth. But it's become an important part of the American history by the 1800s. Thanksgiving was modeled after the biblical celebration of Sukkot when they desired to give thanks to God for the blessings and their sustenance. They look right to the scripture, which is why Sukkot, a fall-time feast, looks an awful lot like Thanksgiving. There's a lot of parallels there. And as we celebrate it today as one of copious amounts of food, turkey, stuffing, vegetables, gravies, and numerous pies, and it's centered around family, Thanksgiving is also the most traveled holiday in America, which is why we've been praying for this four-day weekend for no traffic fatalities. The act of Thanksgiving is biblical, not the American holiday, but the act itself. It is a sacrifice of thanks committed, co commanded in Torah where one gives heartfelt thanks to Adonai for many reasons, including but not limited to your recovery from an illness, your delivered from danger, safe return home from a trip or a journey, provision and sustenance, or any other reason for thanking Adonai for his blessings upon you. In Leviticus 7, verse 12, it says, If a person offers it for giving thanks, todah in the Hebrew, which is to give thanks, to laud, to praise, to confess, to give praise to God, songs of liturgical worship in the Psalms, hymns of praise, thanks offering, sacrifice of thanksgiving. So if the person wants to todah Adonai, he is to offer it with a thanksgiving sacrifice, zivach todah, Zavach is an animal sacrifice, but it's not a korban. It's not a sin sacrifice. It's a sacrifice of covenant, righteousness, fellowship with God. It's very similar to our Shalemim offering that we do three times a year. So he's to offer it with the Thanksgiving sacrifice of unleavened cakes mixed with oil, matzah spread with olive oil, and cakes made of fine flour mixed with olive oil and fried. Todah is an act of worship whose root word is yada. From the word yad, meaning hand, yada appears 111 times in the Bible, and it means to revere or worship with extended hands, to acknowledge praise or to give thanks, to lift hands. It comes from the, again, two root words, yad, which means the open hands posture or power, and ah from God's name. Basically, yada is interaction with Adonai by lifting our hands in praise. Yada is to throw cast, to confess, to praise, to give thanks. So thanksgiving, todah, an extension of the hands, a vow, adoration, and the kahil of the congregation of worshipers offering a sacrifice of praise. In Leviticus 9.22, Aaron raises his hands towards the people and bless them after offering the sacrifice. Raised hands signifies praise and worship and acceptance of sacrifices and blessings. We raise our hands to give thanks to Adonai, for the blessings in our lives, for the glory of God. Raise our hand, raising our hands before Adonai, it's not a charismatic thing. It's not a Pentecostal thing. It's a God thing. And we find Yada being used when Adonai intervened in the affairs of his people with miraculous deliverance. Yada is our response to answered prayers. When Adonai reveals himself through his word, through revelation or the manifestation of his presence, Yada should always be our response to Adonai's blessing upon us and his intervention on our behalf. When the Israelites were battling the Amalekites in Exodus 17, I just talked about this about a month ago, Moshe positioned himself on a hill overlooking the battle. He would raise his hands and the Israelites were winning. But when he lowered them, the Amalekites were prevailing. So Aaron and Hur supported Moses by helping him raise his hands. Moshe's gesture was significant. His simple act of raising his hands and worship and praise to God won the victory in battle. At sunset this evening, we're at day 50 in the war with Hamas. Very difficult, stressful time that is weighing 
heavily on us all. We do not forget the barbarity, the cruelty, and the savage of what was done on October 7th. Yet in all this, I'm Yada. I'm thankful, as horrendous and unspeakable as the attack was, Hamas was ordered to go all the way to Jerusalem, but they didn't. So for this, I'm Yada. This conflict will end with a permanent Israeli presence in Gaza. For this, I'm Yada. I'm thankful. As Gaza is Israel's ancient land. That's rightfully our land, according to Scripture. Amen. The Palestinians are actually the occupiers. Amen. And by the way, there's no such thing as a Palestinian. Amen. They're Jordanian descent, they're Egyptian descent, and they should go back to their home countries. But interesting enough, Jordan won't receive them, nor will Egypt. Hamas will be eliminated. For this, I'm yada. I'm very thankful. I'm thankful that this may be the beginning of Israel's revival as we wait to hear all Israel say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Yada is how we express our gratitude, thanks to honor him. Daniel gives a response to Daniel 2, 23, which illustrates his spontaneous reaction and praise regarding Adonai's intervention. King Nebuchadnezzar was about to kill all the magicians, the exorcists, the sorcerers, and the astrologers, including Daniel and his other Jewish associates, because the Persian wise men couldn't declare and interpret the king's dream. Daniel, upon hearing the report of their imminent demise, praised Adonai, who answered Daniel, revealing both the dream and the interpretation to him, sparing the lives of both the Jewish and Gentile wise men alike. In Daniel 2.23, he said, I thank Yada." And praise, Shabbat, which means to shout, to address in a loud tone, to command, to triumph, to laud, to praise, and loudly commend God. He said, I thank and praise you, Yada Shabbat, God of my answers, for giving me wisdom and power and revealing to me what we wanted from you, for giving us the answer for the king. Yada praise is one in which we, like Daniel, raise our hands in spontaneous gratitude for what Adonai has done and will do. Our raised hands are a natural extension of our expression of thanks, Toda, to pray, Shabbat, to loudly address, to shout and declare his glory. This ties directly into the ironic benediction that what we do so often at the end of the services. In the Hebrew breakdown of the ironic benediction, God commands Moshe to speak to Aaron and tell him how to bless, how to graft both Israel and the nations into the source of life and sustenance, both materially and spiritually to nourish and sustain us. He will take heed to protect, defend, and guard you. Adonai granted you his hedge of protection, his face, his divine presence will be with you in all of its forms and attributes. He will enlighten you with the knowledge and wisdom of who he is. He will grant you his favor, his grace, his mercy, and even pity. He will give his unconditional love that transcends all understanding. He will give you grace you don't merit or deserve. He will lift up his face, shining upon you. He will grant spiritual intimacy. He will give you his shalom, his peace, that lack the absence of conflict, complete wholeness, wellness, healing, restoration, prosperity in the face of conflict, adversity, attack, and tribulation. He will give you balance and harmony. He will mark you as his through his ineffable name placed upon you, and you will be victorious. And this is recited with hands uplifted and raised. This was the last act Yeshua did and performed over the Talmudim as he was ascending to heaven. In Luke 24, starting at verse 50, he led them out toward Bet Anya. Then raising his hands, he said the bracha over them. Shalom. Over the t- this is the last thing he did over the disciples before he ascends to heaven. And as he was blessing them, he withdrew for them and was carried up into heaven. They bowed and worshipped to him, then returned to Jerusalem, overflowing with joy. And they spent all their time in the temple courts praising God. You see, Yeshua teaches a profound connection here between Yada and the blessings of Adonai. With hands raised and most likely kneeling, the root word of bracha is to berach, which means to kneel. While invoking Adonai, his father's blessing upon his Talmudim, Yeshua is also praising Adonai in supplication, Yada. Yada may also be expressed through songs and musical instruments. 
Our entire body is used to express thankfulness and gratitude of our hearts. This is why you see when the Jewish people are davening, when they say the word Baruch or bless, it's a slight kneel and a bow forward. That's so every muscle, tissue, and sinew in your body is actively engaged in worshiping the Most High God. That simple little act, and you move every muscle and tissue and sinew in your body. As they sway and bend their knees while praying and worshiping, when they recite the word bracha, every action and part of your body is engaged. They're expressing praise unto Adonai with every fiber, every muscle of their being. The West tends to view this behavior as odd, yet it's extremely biblical. Adonai, who is the same today as he will be tomorrow, as he was back in Daniel's day, still ministers and intervenes on behalf of his people, those who call upon his name. See, Adonai wants to be a part of your life, to be your source of knowledge, wisdom, and strength, and he desires your yada. The certainty of God's protection for those who serve him and call upon his name is described in Psalms 138, starting at verse 3. It said, when I called you, you answered me. You made me bold and strong. All the kings of the earth will thank you. Yada. Adonai, when they hear the words you have spoken, they will sing about Adonai's ways. Great is the glory of Adonai. For through Adonai is, for though Adonai is high, he cares for the lowly, while the proud he perceives from afar. You keep me alive when surrounded by danger. You put out your hand when my enemies rage. In your right hand, you save me. Adonai will fulfill his purpose for me. Your grace, Adonai, continues forever. Don't abandon the work of your hands. See, Adonai's presence is not contained to synagogues, temples, or church. His glory, his word, his presence, his grace and mercy will be known to all the world. All the nation's leaders will know. They will all yada, and they will all sing and praise his glory. All the world's leaders, even in times of danger and trouble, he will extend that right hand and save you when you yada. The heart of gratitude and thanks will be the core essence of the Messianic reign when Yeshua returns. In Isaiah 12, starting at verse 4, on that day you will say, give thanks, yada, to Adonai. Call on his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. Declare how exalted is his name. Sing to Adonai, for he has triumphed. This is being made known throughout the earth. Shout and sing for joy, you who live in Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is with you in greatness. Yahda is how we acknowledge God and honor him both today and in the Akhret Hayamim in the Messianic reign when Yeshua returns. Adonai must and will be honored as a testimony to the world of the great God we serve, whose love knows no bounds, who can be trusted without reservation, whose power and strength delivers and empowers us, who stands with us through every situation in life, bringing relief, joy, and peace to our hearts. When you're not used to it, the lifting of hands and praise and worship could be a little intimidating. In fact, there's some believing comedians that make jokes about it, but carrying the refrigerator and waving at the mailman. And... But the lifting of hands and praise and supplication, it's also an expression of freedom. Now, so you know this, that's one of the things we don't do here. You're not going to hear our worship leader say, okay, everyone raise your hands. Because immediately... 10% of you are going to do this. Because we just encroached on your free will. When this is done, it's done naturally. And it comes out of a loving heart to give him praise and supplication through an expression of freedom. It's a liberating experience that allows us to break through into a whole new realm, a whole new level of worship that vayikra, that draws us closer to God. Incorporate Yada praise into your daily life and worship time. Do not allow the opinions and false teachings of mankind theology, man-made theology, to rob you of a powerful God encounter. Raise your hands, open your heart, and invite Adonai to fill you with his presence. Honor him with your life, with thanksgiving for all things. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks. Eucharistio is to be grateful, to feel thankful, to give thanks. For this is what God wants from you who are united with Messiah, Yeshua. 
The second Hebrew praise word, whose root word is yada again, is toda. Toda is a confession of faith that God is supreme and able to do all things for you, that with him all things are possible. Associated with temple sacrifices, toda was incorporated by choirs and used in processions who sang hymns of thanksgiving. Zivak toda offerings are given without consideration of your circumstances as viewed through our natural eyes. And in other words, giving Tuesday next week would actually be a zivak toda. To do this, you do this out of the willingness of the heart to honor God and all the great blessings and the supernatural intervention in your life on his behalf. By walking in trust and thanking Adonai, we view our circumstances through his eyes who can do all things. Do not underestimate Zivak Toda. It will invoke the hand of God upon your life. It unlocks and releases the power and wisdom of God upon you as you offer that sacrifice of praise. It opens the outer boot, Hashem the portals of heaven over you, releasing his provision and blessings upon you, placing you in a posture, a position of power, of victory by which you strategically influence and impact people for the kingdom of God. Yada is the protocol for entering into his presence. Psalms 100, one of the most well-known psalms, is written specifically about this. Many worship songs have been written through this psalm. Psalms 100, starting at verse 3. Be aware. I always like it when it starts out there. Be aware. That means pay attention. Something's happening. Be aware that Adonai is God. It is he who made us. And we are his, his people, the flock in his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yada. Enter his courtyards with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Haryu el Adonai, shout joyful to the Lord or make a joyful noise to Adonai. The root word of Haryu is ruah. Ruah is found 33 times in the Tanakh. Ruah is not just a shout or a loud noise. It's a battle cry. It's the battle cry before engaging the enemy. It's the joyful response to Adonai's deliverance of his people from danger. There's a mystery hidden here regarding the power of a sacrifice of praise. Unfortunately, praise is not the first thing you think of or do when engaging the enemy, yet it's our most powerful weapon. We see the power of this in the Valley of Bracha when Judah was besieged by the Moabites and Ammonites. King Jehoshaphat, who restored Torah to Judah and walked in the ways of his father David, he prayed and fasted to the Lord, and God answered the king. In the Second Chronicles 20, starting at verse 20, the next morning they arose early and went out into the Tekoa Desert, and as they left, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Yehuda." and you inhabitants of Yerushalayim. Trust in Adonai your God, and you will be safe. Trust in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting with the people, he appointed those who would sing to Adonai and praise the splendor of his holiness. And as they went out ahead of the army, they sang, were saying, Yada. They said, Yada. Give thanks to Adonai. Yada, Adonai, for his grace continues forever. Then during that time when they were singing and praising Adonai, he brought a surprise attack against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come to fight Yehuda, and they were defeated. We're talking hundreds of thousands of soldiers were defeated without one sword being unsheathed. And what the people sing? Yada to Adonai, for his grace continues forever. Speak Yada into every one of your situations and what Adonai defeated your enemies on your behalf. I think it's essential for us to recognize that we are physical beings and our outward actions impart, impact our inward spirit. Of course, our inward spirit is more important than any outward actions, but God has made us in such a way that we can't separate the two. The spirit becomes physical. The physical becomes spiritual. See, unforgiveness and bitterness, if left unchecked, will turn into physical ailments in your body. They're intertwined. You can't separate the two. Yet that praise is used when we're in desperate physical, spiritual, or financial situations and need a decisive victory from the Lord. Raising your hands is one of the most explosive, meaningful, and powerful expressions of breakthrough praise one can do in spiritual warfare. Worship pulls down down Adonai's glory. Psalms 22 states that he inhabits the praises of his people. He sits enthroned on the praises of his people. 
What this means is that when you yadah, when you praise, Adonai comes down in the midst of your situation and he inhabits your praises. It's a spiritual weapon. It's the key used to unlock doors, tear down strongholds, and obtain your breakthrough. When yadah, Adonai, is released, when you speak it, demons tremble. Yokes and fetters are broken. Hasetan fears those who yada because he can't remain when the presence of Adonai appears. He must leave. Yada is so powerful that it can bring healing to the physical body, mind, and the spirit. This is a strategic warfare weapon. No matter what you're fighting, no matter what you're facing, whatever that situation is, it, it's so blessed me to see the soldiers going into battle and guess what's on the back of their personnel carrier? An open Torah. And guess what they're doing standing around that Torah? They got their hands raised and they're praising their Yadah Adonai in the midst of battle. They know a secret that few of us understand here in the West. This is more powerful than this. But if you don't employ it, it's useless. It's something we have to do, something we have to engage in. I'm going to ask you to stand. This is where we transition from theory to practice. Because talking about it's not enough. We've got to do it. For every person in here who's facing something in their life, a physical ailment, a relational issue, financial issues, whatever that issue is, addictions, I'm gonna invite you to come down front. No matter what you're dealing with, we're all dealing with issues. Ask for bits and I've got a lot of issues. We fight every day. I'm not going to tell you to do anything. But I'm going to invite you to consider raising your hands tonight as we engage in Yada. And we're going to sing a praise song and engage ourselves in warfare tonight, right now. Whatever you're facing, whatever that issue is, I myself, I want to include Israel in this as well. I want to join with my brothers and sisters engaging in this battle. And this is significant and profound because you're doing it at the eastern gate of America, that spiritual gate, the birthplace of America. Incredibly prophetic and powerful what we're about to do. Abba Father, in Yeshua's name, we humbly and boldly come before you right now. And Father, we're not facing the Ammonites or the Amalekites. But we're facing struggles of spiritual battles that are real, that consume our time, that make us sick, that rob our finances, that cause us disruptions in families, between marriages, children to parents, parents to children. We're facing significant struggles as a nation as we stand against wokeism the LGBTQT movement that is seeking to destroy and indoctrinate our children. For every sickness, for every disease, tonight, right now, Abba Father, we raise our hands and we yada, yada Shabak. We shout your praises and your glory. We honor you. We worship you with our lips. We profess your glory, O oh God. Shabak, yada, yada Shabak to Israel, Father. Give your troops the victory. Release those hostages as we speak Yadash Shabbat into those tunnels and command the fetters to be gone and the doors to open. Every hostage released, Yadash Shabbat. Yadash Shabbat. Speak it into your situation. Speak it into your atmosphere. Speak it into your family. Speak it into your finances. Speak it into your health. Speak it into your body. Yadash. 
Yada Shabak. Father, we're two or more gathered. You are here. And as we praise right now, you will inhabit our praises and your presence will be here with us as we continue to Yada. Yada Adonai. Glorious and holy are you. You are worthy of our Yada. And tonight we raise our hands in adoration, in supplication to your word, to give you the honor and the glory that you deserve. Yada Adonai. Yada Adonai. Yada Adonai. Yada Adonai. 